This is Mrs. Murphy, and today we will, we will be discussing HCI, or Human-Computer Interaction. In this chapter, we'll discuss HCI, and we'll learn some of the strategies for designing interfaces that work well. HCI stands for Human-Computer Interaction. It's the study of the interaction between users, the people, and computers. Now, one of the cool things about HCI is it's interdisciplinary. It, the human is a complex creature, and trying to understand it, how it interacts, takes information from like psychology and neuroscience and si sociology, linguistics, computer science, engineering, artificial intelligence. They all come together and try and figure out what works best. The three components of HCI, well, obviously one is the human and then the computer, but the goal of HCI is to improve this interaction between the user and the computers by trying to make computers more user-friendly. In order to create a good interface for humans, you need to know how humans think and behave and remember. Well, understanding a little bit about the human brain is key. So, us as humans, we have short-term memory. This is where you store information when you sur first receive it from any of your input devices. You know, things like sight, sound, feeling, taste, those are all of our input devices. The nice thing about short-term memory is you have the information right now. You can remember it. Trouble is, space is limited, and that information is not going to stay there very long. Well, if something's repeated enough times, it goes into long-term memory. This has a larger storage capacity, potentially unlimited. The trouble is it's almost it's difficult to access the information. This is why a GUI interface has practically taken over. It's, there's no one uses console anymore because we don't want to have to remember all of those commands. But with the GUI, we can just choose from the options we have available to get the computer to do what we want. Now we've talked about s console and GUI systems, um, both which use standard input devices such as touch screen, mouse, keyboard, but that's not the only way we can interface with our machines. You can use gesture interfaces, which is when you move and the computer just detects and interprets your movements. Gaze systems, those are great for people that are quadriplegic. The user can just move their eyes and the computer responds appropriately. Voice recognition or la natural language processing is becoming more and a more of a thing with the uh, OK Google or Siri. Uh, other uses include helping people with speech disorders to be understood. Haptics technology or touch sensitive lets you touch a digital object. Augmented reality, that's where the user's view is generated, kind of it's like this generated image of the computer generated image over the real world. Okay, here's a couple of principles of design that you might learn in, in an HCI class. There are so many more, and they differ depending on whether you're programming for a smartphone, tablet, computers, or haptics technology. Uh, but this, So this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg in this class. First thing in designing an interface is to know your user. Who's going to be using your site or your app? One site that I have seen that definitely knows their user is PBS Kids. And I mention this one not just because I have kids at home and they're always on this site. But it's, I'm not saying it's a particularly good site for those of us who are above the age of seven. But it's a site that definitely knows their target audience. Anytime you hover over any of the buttons, there's a sound that reads, reads the button text to you. It's super good for all of those demographics of kids that can't read yet. Uh, the games that are on the site are some of these tap and drag instead of drag drop. Perfect for little hands that can't quite grasp the concept of holding the mouse button down while dragging. Now, when making an app or a site, it, you need to keep in mind that the application is for the user. Uh, you want to keep the user's needs in focus when creating the application. It goes beyond choosing your theme for, Go for Gmail, but it's a good starting example. Uh, now, what about users need to be able to try things out without the fear of destroying their device? We want warnings on anything that might cause loss of data or... Um, as an application developer, you need to anticipate the needs of others. Take, for example, when you view pictures on your phone. Uh, 
The options that you have there should be items you are planning to do with your pictures, such as send them to Facebook and Instagram, text it to someone, assign a contact, things like that that you might do with the pictures on your phone. Now your design should be intuitive to use. Help should be provided when needed, such as the tooltips that appear when you hover over the buttons in an application. Anytime you have visual clues like this, you don't want them to be distracting that the user can't focus on what they're doing though. I'm not sure if you guys are old enough to remember Clippy from, from the Microsoft products. Your site should respond to the user, should provide feedback to the actions they're performing. In this example, the window appears when you copy data. It lets them know that their data is being put in the other location. But it doesn't overwhelm the user with details. They're available on command, such as the More Details button. You want your interface to be as familiar as possible. This can be done by using real-world metaphors, such as the tabs on the top of a web page. Look like folder file tabs. Or take the speaker icon. It looks like little speakers, one with no sound to mean quiet, and one with a little sound waves coming out meaning loud. Now, the one that always gets me is the save button. It still looks like a floppy disk, even though no one uses floppy disks in the last 10 years. It's still a familiar icon to anyone who's ever saved the file. Now, an interface should be consistent. Take, for example, the ribbon in Word and Excel and PowerPoint. They have very similar features in the exact same places. Or web pages, they always have the navigation down the same way on every single page, same design. Okay, so here's an obvious one, but people have actually done studies to prove that a good design should be attractive. Something Apple has done very well. So I leave you with the, uh, the joke, the comic of the day. This is a Dilbert comic. And he says, your user requirements include 400 features. You do realize that no human would be able to use a product with that level of complexity. And the other guy says, good point. I better add easy to use to the list. But it's, it's a difficult balance between customizable and easy to use. Because the more customizable something is, the more difficult it is to use. Which is why learning about how humans interact with computers can give you a better product.